All right. Welcome uh-huh. back to Vicenza Podcasts. Today's special guests are two familiar friends of mine, uh, Sylvia Woodward and Chipman Flowers. Hey. Hey, guys. <laughs> Sean Dipsy. It's been, it's been Sylvia Woodward. It's been too long. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Just three yeah. words. Just to be fair, obviously, uh, Chip lives up in this neck of the woods, has been here for, what, a million years? It seems like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Chip, Chip's in the Boston area. Sylvia, you're over in Italy, but uh. <laughs> the little problem, you betrayed the gold and yes. black. I have and- betrayed everyone for the red, white, and blue. Oh I'm part God. of the Aviano, the Aviano Saints now. <laughs> you actually cheer them on. Oh, God. You know, I try to avoid the games, actually. I mean, if we're playing Vicenza, I just, I, I just won't go, you know? But because, I, you know, I, I'm going to end up biting the hand that feeds me. So. Right. Yeah. Your, your students are going to come after I mean, you. You should be ashamed to, like, put that. I mean, I, I, I can't even walk into Aviano. Like, I... I, I get mad, like, you know, when anybody says, oh, you know, I went to Aviano High School. Like, like you up here in the interview telling them, I've always wanted to be a saint. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was rough. It, it, you know, and there was a period there where my husband was um, coaching baseball. So that was really rough for me. In Aviano or Italy? In or Aviano. Uh-huh. They, they had baseball? What? what, what this <laughs> yeah, school's baseball. changed, man. The school... Baseball. Your base what? is a lot bigger now. Isn't Aviano a lot bigger now? Is that right? I think so. I mean, it's a lot bigger than I remembered it. I remember it just being like this little, you know, in this little thing in the middle of nowhere. It's still kind of in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> but it's a bigger nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> wow. it's a school yeah, it is. Still, it's still connected. Like, you remember you have to walk under that underpass? Oh, yeah, yeah, there? yeah. They closed that down. Oh, they, really? Yeah. Just recently, as of like a couple of years ago, they closed that particular base that where you, it would connect one side of the base to the other with an underpass. Yeah, they closed that down. Wow, that's that's where the gym was. Remember, that's where all the memories, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, you know, they 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 have a like two or three gyms now here. Um, <laughs> since then, you know, our tax dollars at work, you know. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> And so pretty soon it's going to get bigger because, you know, a lot of bases and stuff, and troops are moving down from Germany. That's right. And, um, yeah, to Aviano. So. I, I wouldn't count on that. I think, the, I think after November 2nd, <laughs> that's going <laughs> to... I, 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 I suspect that that's going to go out the window. Yeah, I suspect after... I, 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 bet, I bet they're not even like... They're like, yeah, yeah, they're coming. Wink. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I suspect that's not going to happen. But that's just me. I suspect that'll be the first thing that goes. <laughs> well, I'm banking on it because I need a job, man. I, <laughs> you know, the more the merrier. Oh, man. <laughs> you want a bigger classroom? Is that a bigger well, Zoom yeah. conference because classroom? I, 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 I don't want a bigger classroom. And that's a really, you know, uh, a difficult topic right now. But, um, but I do want to make sure that there's a big pool to choose from, you know? Wow. And uh, yeah, actually, we're we're kind of worried about going back into the classroom right now. We yeah. already got like twenty five kids to one teacher. So, but let's not talk politics. No, <laughs> no. But it would it would be interesting to get your take uh, being in Italy on um, you know oh, this, whole, this whole COVID thing. Yeah, you were yeah. Really I was thinking about it. You know, I just posted. I, I thought about what you said, you know, uh, um, a couple of weeks ago when you saw me at the store and you said, uh, you're finally wearing your mask, <laughs> you know, um, because it seems like we're not. Uh, it, uh, last night, um, we had the, a party for my mom's birthday and we had a pretty big party and none of us were wearing masks, but that's because... Um, I feel like, um, well, I, well, it wasn't required because we're all, it was one big family. And I feel like we really worked hard to get to where we're at right now, you know? Yeah. Um, so it's okay. it's okay if you're a Trumpy. 
You know, it, it, <laughs> you know we're not going to judge. We, we don't, we don't, <laughs> don't, we don't get, judge. Don't get I mean, me started. I'm going to get fired. Listen, I, we're not here to judge. Look, I mean, if you, you know, the rest of us, we're just going to keep our mask on. But look, gonna, I, I am going to say this before you finish the story. I will give, and Sean, you and I actually talked about this, remember? We will give Sylvia Woodard credit because you might have been the first person on planet Earth that put out like the warning signs to the USA <laughs> about how that bad were, that was. were left unheeded, obviously. Yeah, I remember going on Facebook in like February or January or whatever it was, and like, and I rarely go on Facebook anyway, you know, outside of work. And I just remember seeing every day Sylvia. What, 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 Sean, what was it like? It was like Sylvia's diary about COVID and how, you know, all you Americans <laughs> better watch out. And your way and, and this shit is coming your way. I, you I told him. I told him Florida is going to be screwed up. <laughs> Believe me. You know, we're going to give you like. It, it, listen, if I, if me and the Bidens ever get along again, doubtful. But, <laughs> but well, we know about that. <laughs> but you know, that's a whole another story. That's another conversation. <laughs> but if we, you know, if I ever decide to make up with with with, with the Bidens, I'm going to have to say that you know you should dare, you should get like some sort of presidential freedom award or something yes. because you definitely post it like every day of how it sucked and how we all right. and we all were like and what one point sean's like you know sylvie's going crazy out there <laughs> 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 sean, sean was like listen what's wrong with sylvie over there you know Look, i'm not throwing him under the bus now y'all know i listen to you yeah let me get that tire <laughs> off my back real quick <laughs> now y'all know right <laughs> well that's it that's me to my point right i mean when we shut down when we shut it down we shut it down i'm talking like we had uh the hospital open the grocery store open and the pharmacy was open and that was it y'all talking about you're on lockdown you got home depot open <laughs> walmart's open <laughs> You still Those got all, all your, you know, your Those were all essential. Fast food. <laughs> Those were all essential to American lifestyle. We we can't help it. Starbucks needed to be open too, you know, because you know that that was essential. Y'all had that to kept have everybody that open. moving. See, See? And, and this is what happens. Now y'all got to shut it down again. You know, you could have just shut it down once. Just listen. You know, <laughs> y'all y'all want to listen to Italy. Y'all want to listen. Let's go back to a better time then. <laughs> yeah, let's <laughs> before Chip was in politics. In Italy. <laughs> before COVID hit. Let's go to back when when we were high schoolers. Let's go into those days that we try to forget mm -hmm. or remember. I don't know. Uh -huh. Um I mean we had a great time. We had a great time in Vicenza. Vicenza was the place. Chip, <laughs> I still Chip. have a great time in Vicenza. <laughs> Well, 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 rubbing it in, well, well, Sylvia. Well, tell us. <laughs> Way to let it go. Wait oh, let it go. Yes, yes, yes. So, it, was, it was good. It was good. You know, I I was just thinking the other day. Um, there was a time. There was a, a chip. Do you remember this? There was one. There was one day, one night when you and Guppy had decided to go to um, this club. Um, that was out there in the what you call the industrial zone. It was. It, was, it was. it started with an A, like area sound or something. I can't remember exactly, but y'all wanted to go check it out. And um, <laughs> it was I funny. actually do remember this. Yeah, and then y'all went in there, and I, I think you didn't like it. You wanted to leave, but you had to pay to leave. <laughs> what? Oh. You had to pay to leave. You could. You didn't pay when you went in. You know, you paid when you went out. And and Chip it, it was in there with Guppy, and he didn't want to pay because he figured, you know, we just stepped in. We want to step out. So I don't know how you guys. Because this is before cell phones, but somehow I must have been waiting outside. I don't know because they decided that they were just going to jump the wall, <laughs> and I was the getaway driver. <laughs> That was pretty bad. It it was first of all, Sylvia's not giving this story justice. It, it was it was it was redemption. So, redemption. Go ahead. First of all, in all fairness, so see since how, how memories get when age and everybody. <laughs> oh, Chip. 
the story, the story has developed a life with itself. Guppy, for those of Jimmy Zucchino, for those of you who are not familiar, I have no, no one who can refer to him by his first name except probably his troops now. But <laughs> I wish he was on the line of like, what is he, Lieutenant Colonel now? It's like, you'll always be Guppy to me. Don't, don't, don't yeah, try you'll to, always be Guppy. I don't want to care about your name. But I remember Guppy, um, so he went to the club and Sylvia was in the car. I remember walking in and walking out the front door. See, this is how the story's changed. No, no, there was a- Guppy, Guppy, Guppy decides that he's gonna jump the wall. I just walked out without paying. Guppy decides <laughs> that he's gonna jump the wall of the club. It was an outdoor club for those of you yes. checking out. It was an outdoor patio. And he jumps over the patio and I'm walking back towards the car calmly, you know, thinking that Guppy, I actually thought Guppy actually paid. That in all in all fairness. I thought because he he when I turned around he was gone. I was like, oh, maybe he went and paid. So then all I see is Guppy coming around the corner saying, run. <laughs> and I'm like, what? He's like, run. He's like, he's like, I don't know what you're saying. Run. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, and we jump in the car and it was like Sean, it was like the fast and the furious. I have never been to this day in a high-speed car chase other than that night with Sylvia driving. In and I'm not, gonna say she, I'm not gonna say she can't drive fast. I'm, I'm not gonna say that, but let's put it like this. They had an edge on us. <laughs> they, they, they're like, well, yeah. Chef, y'all like, made me nervous. nervous. You made me nervous. You're running towards the car and said, run, run, turn the car on, go. I forgot to turn my lights on. Yes. <laughs> She's driving like 50 miles an hour and they're driving like, I don't know, Audis or Beamers. And I mean, they're flying out, they're jumping over. It was, it was insane. And, and finally, like they corner us. It was actually kind of cool. I thought we were dead. I mean, in all fairness, I was like, we're just dead. Are you talking about the Italian police? Who's it, no, it was like, it was like the, the, I, I thought they were more like mob, the mobster. I mean, the way they did it gangster style, cause they like, they pulled in front of Sylvia and forced, kind of forced her off <laughs> and pushed her to wow. the side. And they had like, it was like three cars. They had one in front and like two in back of us. And they all basically- for what? All for five dollars? Yeah, it was like, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, yes. it was crazy. It was like- God. And so- I, There was an I, island. I remember, I, all I remember is like hitting all the signs on the island because I didn't have my lights on. So I'm hitting all the signs and we're bouncing, hitting our heads on the top of the, the car. And I remember Sylvia being so mad when she gets pulled over. This is how I know we'll always be going. Sylvia looks back at Guppy and goes, Jimmy, Jimmy, get out. Just get out, Jimmy. Just, just get out. <laughs> like, totally rolled on Guppy. <laughs> Guppy gets out of the car. The <laughs> and mind you, they had, like, surrounded our car. You know, like, all their hands are in their jackets. And I don't, I'm, you're just assuming their gun's in there, right? All that, and I'm like, and I'm like, this is it. Guppy's dead. <laughs> and so they basically like Guppy's outside talking to him. He's pointing to the car or whatever. <laughs> and like, didn't they say like, you know, yeah? You know, and he explains like, oh, you know, we forgot to pay. Oops. And like, <laughs> and they go, well, what about him? And Guppy's like, like, what about that melod? What, what is it? The guy from Africa or something, right? <laughs> I was like, wow, it's so racist here. I was like, this is messed up. He's like, they're like, oh, Chip? <laughs> oh, he's with us too. So uh, it, was a, it was a crazy night. But it was a, it was a, and those of you- You're right, know, you're right. Guppy, I did forget uh, a few details. <laughs> yeah, Guppy, Guppy, Guppy made life fun. I can honestly say he, he uh, you know, yeah. he, uh, he made, you know, Sean, everybody, everybody Were you seniors Guppy. or juniors? What, what year was this I think we were out. <laughs> college, yeah, we came back from college. You got to show everybody yeah. up, show them how to do it. It was so <laughs> bad. <in> trouble. <laughs> I, I love those returns, though. Back to Vicenza, like the, the, the winter return, the winter break, all the college kids come back. We, oh, uh, yeah. we would have nothing to do yeah. but hang out and party. We had no reason exactly. to do anything else, which was you great. Know, you couldn't get in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> you like know. wake up at two in the afternoon and, and, you know, maybe eat something and go, all right, where are we going? Where are we going out? Right. Where's everybody going? That was it. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. It was, it was, well, you've been back though, Sean, many times, right? You've been back, how many times have you been? Only, only a few, not, not really enough, never enough. I mean, even with, with uh, COVID going on, all I think about is Italy, uh, going back to Italy, coming back with, with my son and my wife and, yeah. you know, 
I'll throw in the craft beer reference, Brian Jansing. <laughs> hey, Brian. Hey, Brian. Wait, isn't, isn't Karen still over there? His sister, isn't she? No, is Karen's in London. Yeah. Oh, I thought she was in Italy. I don't know. I thought she was in art school, though, right? For a while or something. I yeah. Know. You're a few that. years behind Karen, on your updates. Karen and I actually um, worked together for a while out, uh, after uh, we were, well, yeah, for a little bit. Um, after high school, we were um, working uh, at the courier service. That was wait, fun, what? too. Wait, 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 who? Wait, what? Karen. Karen and I were working together. What, at the post office? <laughs> the post office? What? Yeah, no, what? no, 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 no. It was an Italian company. Yeah. The like courier service, did you say? What? Like the courier FedEx? service. Like, fe like <laughs> FedEx? Is that like is that like a janitor's a sanitation engineer? I mean, is this a new? Is this a new? Is this a new way? I need, I need well, it's stuff. not the post office. Jesus Christ! It's like UPS. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Why can't you just say that? I mean, John, a courier service. Like, too many entendres on that one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we had a good time. Natalie Hatton and I too. We worked many years together. Who are, you, who are you staying in touch with, Sylvia? Who, who are your... Uh... Oh, gosh. Um, I mean, here, that still live here? I think just Natalie and I just still live here. And, you know, um, of the people that I knew from back, back when. What is Natalie and doing? Of everybody on Facebook. What's Natalie doing these days? She is living in Vicenza. I run into her. Sometimes, you know, I go to Bellagio. Remember Bellagio? Why are I you talking Bellagio. Bellagio? What's in Bellagio for you? Like, that, that, <laughs> I take my so kids trick or treating, you know? Oh. So, yeah. So, you know, as I'm taking them trick or treating, I got to tell them, oh, this is where we had that party. And this is where we did. <laughs> trick or treat. <laughs> By your swimming pool, Sean. <laughs> What's up? Well, is that two hours away? I don't remember. Pordenone, Aviano, um, Vicenza. What's the for a slow driver, for me, it's one hour, but, you know. Okay. No, you're still a <laughs> I, don't remember. I, still, I still remember that night. You're very slow. <laughs> you're very slow. <laughs> I, it's just that we had people on our ass. That's why it seemed like I was okay. slow. <laughs> that would be the time you're supposed to be fast. <laughs> hey, hey, it's your journey. It's your story. <laughs> All right. Tell, tell yeah. me, here's, a good, here's a good one. Tell me, tell me how you remember what was, what was Chip like in high school. What was he? I remember him being all dressed up, dressed up like, you know, president, uh, you know, in charge of the uh, school board and oh, Mr. Geez. Politician. What is this, the actor studio? Are you, <laughs> what is this? Tell me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Chip and I, we would go toe to toe at Jeopardy. When it was oh. Jeopardy time, let me tell you. Oh, it was on. Mr. Club, Mr. Club's <laughs> history class yes. every Friday. Yes. Every right. Friday, yeah. So we'd be just flip. He'd always put us on opposite teams, you know, and be just flipping through our nose, trying, looking at each other like who's going to be who. <laughs> yeah. So we had that, and then we had. Um, I remember a lot of math classes. Um, Chip coming in. I didn't do my homework. <laughs> 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 Yeah. <laughs> what'd you get what'd you get on this can I borrow your homework real quick can I borrow you? So, well wait before you leave Mr. Club in Jeopardy because that rings loud for uh, some of the stories everybody has when you say competitive what did you guys do to try to figure everything out like did you have your own outlines on paper or on your desk so that when you saw his eyes reading it one way oh you... heck yeah <laughs> well, highlighted <laughs> everything I had mine like you know, I had dividers on it. <laughs> <laughs> Little yeah. things everywhere. Mr. Cleb rarely, and by, by the way, we should give a shout out to Mr. Cleb because I, I think Mr. Cleb and Mr. Hill really impacted my life more than probably most teachers. I mean, it was crazy. Like, why I'm in politics, et cetera. But I just remember Mr. Cleb never would go to the second paragraph of the article. So, you know, when you first start doing Jeopardy, you'd read the whole article, say, like, oh my God, he could read the whole thing. And then you realize, like, maybe he went to the second paragraph, but, you know, so you could take an outline and just do two, basically, the first two paragraphs, and that was all you got to know. And that was, like, the secret. Mm -hmm. Now, I still remember the day that Sean Kleb, not Sean, Scott, Scott broke the all-time Jeopardy record 
Now, I'm not, saying, I'm not saying it was rigged. <laughs> but I do think you should have Scott Kleb on here to defend himself <laughs> because, I mean, it just so happens that he broke his dad's record. I'm not saying he had access to the materials before everybody else. Right, right. <laughs> They're uh -huh. like, Dad, this, you know, this second page, <laughs> third page, <laughs> signal. Yeah. So, so tell me, tell me about uh, Mr. Club and Mr. Hill. Mr. How, Hill. How, how oh, we you... have a lot of memories being yeah. Mr. Hill's. Well, what did oh, I, I didn't have them in any classes. I don't, I kind of, I don't know, I'd gone already or whatever, but tell us about oh, yeah. it. What, what's the story? We did drama. We did a lot of plays and stuff together. We did. And uh, Chip, can you, can you remember how mad we used to make him? How do you see? Mr. Oh. Mr. Hill was, it is, and, you know, I would say was. Why do you say was, like these people? But Mr. Hill was a great, is a great guy. I think he lives in Florida now. I think he moved oh. in a couple of years. Like, yeah, so you were at his retirement party. That's right. I remember. Yeah. Just, yeah, I, just, I remember that, yeah. Uh-huh. Tell me yeah. more. Yeah. Yeah, it was great. But, uh, Oh man, we you know we did a lot of plays together. A lot of um, um, the drama they had the drama festival back then, which they no longer have, unfortunately. Are you serious? They got rid of it? Yeah, they don't have that anymore, and especially now with COVID, Lord knows they're not going to have it anymore. Right. But um, yeah, we would do a lot of um, monologues and and speeches and stuff like that. You remember that? <laughs> and um, but we, we were never prepared. <laughs> That's a problem, we were never prepared. So that man would, oh, we would make life horrible for him, poor man. He, the plays were like, <laughs> he, he, really, he really loved the plays. Um, uh, I remember that. Yeah. He really, you know, I look back, he took pride in drama festival and doing this, the production of whatever. And I remember we did MASH one year. Yeah. And, we did, and I, I remember we did Fame. So was that the year you were, did you do fame? I don't think you did yeah, fame. Yeah, I did fame. Yeah, fame. That's of course right. I did fame. So fame, so, I mean. I forget. I think we dropped a few people. Yes, yes. I was about to say. So <laughs> fame was beyond the talents of anybody at Machinza <laughs> High School. That's like, you know, that's something you do at Juilliard. You don't, you know, like, like, fame was like, he was pushing we the pretended, edge. We pretended very well. <laughs> we pretended until there were a couple scenes. You have Ramon Lyles, who I know. He was like mm -hmm. bebopping. Was he was Leroy, right? Ramon. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Ramon was Leroy, and I remember, you know, they did a couple. You know, he was good. Ramon was good. Ramon really, really came into his own. I think, mm -hmm. um, you know, at Vicenza. I really, I really think that. Um, and I remember the couple scenes where he, like, all of us dropped people one night at the production I remember. and Mr. Hill refused to come out to greet the audience because he was so <laughs> embarrassed and to this day I still remember a, bu a bunch of people laughing after the play he goes a bunch of people in the play laughing and he, and he looks over and he goes remember they're laughing at you not with you yes and he runs back inside and like and like closes the door so no nobody could find him and I just remember, I mean, I still sticks into my memory today. Like, man, like, you know, like take pride in what you do. And he, re he really did. He, he didn't care if it was a school. He just didn't care. It was something he believed. Yeah. That was a sobering moment. I remember we kind of all looked at each other like, oh, I guess they are laughing at us. Yeah, like, <laughs> they're not laughing with you. They're laughing at you. <laughs> so, I was like, so you're kind of telling me that you guys didn't know how good, great you were. Until you were live performing, Jesus, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was you, you were level set a bit. We were level set, yeah. You could say that, but he was such he's such a he, he is such a kind guy. I mean, like I really hate that. The one of the down things I'll say, I don't know how Phil, Sylvia you feel, and Sean, you obviously can relate to this. I, I hate that we don't have reunions the way typical high schools have, right? Because I think it's harder for us to have reunions because. Not everybody can go. I mean, Sean, you you've been to most of them. I I still haven't even gone to one. But like you know, and they you know, and they do the whole all class years, and like you know, yeah, it, it it gets to be a little bit anonymous, I would say, because they, you have so many classes coming together right. at right. once mm -hmm. that you know you only know a few people, except for Sean, who seemed like he knew the whole damn room. <laughs> 
Yeah. And I, have, I have like 700 friends. On you do. And, and, te and what, Teddy Spittle, right? Well, I don't know, yeah. but I somehow knows all the Chinza, you yeah. know, all the Chinza yeah. no news between Sean and Teddy Spittle. You just say, oh, I just didn't know. Uh, Sean knows where they are, you know. That's, that's the real Jeopardy. We're ready. We're ready for that to be called upon. <laughs> It'll be a battle to the end. Teddy and Sean. <laughs> Who is... What year? What year do you want to know about? Johnny Cohut? Oh, you. <laughs> when he was in school, when he was a coach, when he was a teacher, when he was the exactly. artist, what do you want to know? <laughs> hey, Sean. So you weren't born in Vicenza, right? Define born. <laughs> As in your mother gave birth to you in the oh, clinic. There. That would be in New Hampshire. Okay. Uh, and then somewhere six months uh, afterwards or so, they moved to Spangdalem, Germany, and then within a year, they moved to Vicenza, Italy. Wow. Oh, wow. I didn't realize you had roots that deep. I've been the there forever, yeah. Wow. The, the Italian thing for me is never really... It, I, last time I went back, a couple years ago with my wife, it's the people. It, it, the visit, the trip, everything we did, it just always surrounds the, the people, the Italian people. I don't need to go back to the Palladium. I don't need to go to the Nordest. I don't need- I'm glad, because it ain't there no more. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I, you know, it's, really, it, it's I, okay, you know, you walk into the gym and you smell the gym smell, and that's, that's like, it's still here. But yeah. nobody else is in there that you know. Yeah. You know, and for me, that was my dad's office. That was my home. That was my, you know, go-to. So it was just kind of a, it's, it's not home anymore. You know, you walk, there used to be painting murals uh, down near the um, elementary school outside of Mr. Pellerito's office, the smaller gym. And um, it's painted over, like uh, what was done. And, and again, whatever, it, you know, people make their decisions. They're tired of looking at things or it's, it's 20 years old, 30 years old, whatever. It doesn't have the same sentimental value to them. Yeah, but it's fun. It was fun. It, mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I remember Jamie Pellerito's picture of two tennis players and, he picked a really strong, uh, difficult uh, thing to paint. Um, you know, trying to create perception, dimension, a person on the far end of the court and the close end of the court, you know, hitting a tennis ball on a wall. It was just like, wow. But anyway, uh -huh. I, it was good. But um, anyway, speaking of, of the, the good old times of Vicenza, I go back, I just want to be immersed in Italian. I just want to hang out in, in the Italian world. I really don't want to, I, 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 you know, with the people I'm with, I, it, it's fine to speak English. It's just, I enjoy hearing Italian. It just, it, 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 there's a different part of my brain that just, you know, it gets nourishment out of that. And yeah. then I just want to do Italian things and eat great Italian food. Yeah. I'm jealous. Yeah. I'm, I, I have to go back, but I uh, actually feel the same way you do, Sean, is that, you know, Sylvia, I don't know how you do it every day because I would be, I would go down memory lane too much. You know what I'm saying? Like, I uh, think, like if I go, when I go, like I have actually avoided Italy all these years. Well, I was wondering how come you never came back. Listen, you know, I, I, <laughs> I have other countries too. I must, I must check it. Uh, but I did, I did, I avoided it because it's like, it was special for that period of time. And you know, I, I'll actually tell you, I went back in 99 was the last time I was there in law school. And it was, I went back like in October, November, my mom was about to come back to the States or whatever. And I okay. visited and I visited and nobody was there. Like, you know, because it was like off cycle, like mm -hmm. Sean, you wouldn't have been there. I mean, we had, you know, we, it was years off. We all had graduated from undergrad. So nobody, nobody was there at that time. And I tell you, going back when That's nobody funny. is there, it's not the same. It's like, you actually get depressed. Yeah. Like walking around saying, you know, Oh, where's so and so? And like a lot of the teachers by '99 were beginning to leave, or yeah. you know, they you were you were that student that was long ago, right? You were yeah. like, yeah, it wasn't like last year's class, right? You're like, oh <laughs> shit, oh oh, that's right. You you, <laughs> you can tell they're faking it. They have no <laughs> idea who you are. Like, like yeah, I don't remember you as well as so other. <laughs> oh, a hundred kids who <laughs> come across on an annual basis. Right. Like, right? And so I don't know. I, I, that's what I said, Sylvia. I'm always amazed that you can like still go there and have those. Like, and, I mean, it would, it would eat at me. It really would. I, even being yeah. a Naviana would probably eat at me. Yeah. Well, you know, I have to say that here in Naviana, it's like a whole different world. It's like a different country. It's like living in the Germany of Italy. 
you know? So I'm just, you know, I shouldn't refer to themselves as that. <laughs> the Germany of Italy. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's pretty, you know, like, oh, sir. apart from today, where it's really hot, you know, even climate wise, it's a different climate over here. And so I, I don't feel like, uh, you know, I'm, you know, ruining any memories by, by being here because everything is new to me over here, you know. But, um, but in Vicenza, I think the difference is that um, I was back so often that I saw the changes as they were happening. So it wasn't such a rude awakening, you know, to, to return and, and, you know, it wasn't so impactful on me to see all of the, the latest developments. And, you know, what it is what it is. People... Do you guys remember? Do you remember Burger King when it first showed up? Do you guys remember like how well, crazy we were about eating at Burger King? <laughs> I wasn't around when it first came up, um, but I used to um, in the, spend my summers wherever my parents might have been stationed at. We would spend our summers in Yezero, and uh, then we yeah, would always well. make these side trips to Vicenza just to go to Burger King, you know, you had to try that out and have that's, a little, yeah. That's so I funny because on my summers, when we came, were living over there, when we came back to the States during summer, we never went anywhere remotely near a Burger King. <laughs> Probably was like five years out of college that I actually went back. I was like, oh God, Burger King, no. No slight to the good people at Burger King. But, the, <laughs> but it was like, like the, I was like, I, but I was, I agree with you, John. It was, I mean, that place was it for us, right? Burger King. And what was that pizza place that was in the corner of the shop? Remember the old PX that burned down? I actually remember yeah. that PX burned down. Yeah, I, remember, I did too. I remember being in the officer's club and we had, I had bike pass there and I was like, oh, there's some smoke coming out of the PX. And I remember the general of the commanding general of the post being in an officer club. He overheard me and he looked over at me. <laughs> he's, he's like, hmm. <laughs> and then like, hours later, we all go running out of the officer's club and everybody's like standing around just watching this watching thing burn down. Ground. Oh I my God. The fire sale they had, remember the fire sale? People were like- I was gonna say, do you remember that? Do you remember that line? The line I, I, I remember like, Stephanie Danos and Jamie Dreer being, <laughs> being in line to get some really smoke smelling makeup. <laughs> Y'all go smell like smoked ham or something. <laughs> Everything just. And I, I remember, P Sean, you there? yeah, you had to be back that summer because the PX then moved to like um, the pavilion, like a bubble. Remember, it was like yeah. in a pavilion back in yeah. the yeah. old Oak Club. I don't know yeah. if it was there. But and it was hot as hell in there. I, yeah. I don't so remember hot. the last time I went into the PX. To It, it had to be in the 80s. I don't think I had any ever oh. reason to go back to the PX. Oh, you're too, good. you're too good for the PX? Is that <laughs> what, what do you remember that was so good about the PX? You're two biscuits above the PX, you bastard. <laughs> I, I swear, you don't need well, to look they at made the that new PX. PX. Nobody could tell us nothing. That new PX was the bomb. Yeah, it was good <laughs> stuff. Never made it in. Oh, <laughs> my God. I they tore down the new PX and built some mall or something. My mom was telling me, like, She's like, oh yeah, they, they, they got rid of that. And now it's like a big mall there. It's not like a parking lot where it used to be. Like the well, they're, they're in the process right now of um, renovating it. So yeah. It, it's, yeah, even at this very moment, if you were to go in, you'd have no you idea. You know that the, they had contracts. They had a lot of contractual agreements with the Italian, uh, whatever city population. They had to have X number of projects, investments ongoing. So there's always an excuse for something to be built. True. So. Hey, True. it is what it is, you know, employ X percentage of, uh, you know, locals and have so many projects going on and all that right. stuff, which mm -hmm. fine. Mm -hmm. it, good for the Italian economy. Good for us. Uh-huh. Still a gem. How about that snack bar? Y'all remember the snack bar in the corner, right? That's probably the pizza place. Right? They, closed, that shit. they closed that thing. That thing was my life with the jukebox, the music in there. The jukebox. You remember that? It's like the, the video ju it was a video jukebox. Oh yeah, it was like <laughs> must have upgraded it. Online technology. Yeah, you could. We, we and I mean, we'll always have Paula Abdul memories, you know, because of that jukebox <laughs> and <laughs> some drama trips, you know. But Paula Paula Abdul owned that jukebox in nineteen eighty nine. Uh, I mean, oh, literally, so yeah. Paula Abdul straight up stayed on that thing 
nonstop. Like you walk into there, no matter what type of day it was, it was going to be Paula Abdul straight up, and people were still jamming to it. Like, like yeah, three months after it was out, people were like straight up, I tell you. <laughs> they were like still. I was like, it's been three months. Let it go. <laughs> That's yeah, I remember us singing that song all the way down to Sicily, or yeah, all the way down to Call Me So. Uh, still, still, still a good song too. I still when it still comes on, like oh hell yeah, that's Paul Abdul straight up, <laughs> <laughs> like Michael yeah. Jackson Thriller. You gotta stop what you're doing. Like wait, we, we can't be talking right now. Paul Abdul's on. It's straight up. <laughs> so y'all true. shut up. Y'all shut up. <laughs> so so what about what other activities did we have you guys in? Chip, did you make it to volleyball? I don't. I think you did. I just don't remember. Yeah, I, I played volleyball. I played volleyball. That was my. That was my jam. You know, Johnny Cohut and the running out formation. Still, got, <laughs> still, still in the memory, baby. Still, I guess, and, and, and what's that? Uh, you know, whatever that chant we had to yell out when there was a spike. Remember that? Lou am I? Spike. Like, yeah, Pacquiao. Yeah, Lou am I? Yeah. Spike. It's a spike. You know, like. <laughs> And then um, I still remember uh, playing against Milan, and uh, that, that's what I missed the most, because um, I know kids in the States didn't do that, right? Because, like, w- volleyball, we got to travel and stay yeah. overnight in the gymnasiums. And so we had, someone said they don't do that anymore, right? No, nah, they don't. I mean, they shut down everything. All those trips, at the most, we'll take the kids, you know, like downtown or something, or to a different school, and then come back. But... You know, they, they don't do these overnight trips. Wait, was that, you're talking about because of COVID or like, is that just like even not be, done? Even before COVID, things are slowly, I mean, you have a few trips here and there. Like my husband takes um, um, some kids to CERN in Switzerland, he, but the, the, the money seems to always be dwindling down and, and, and people are just very scared of being held liable for, you know, whatever the kids might do. So... Mm-hmm. They're not. They're not doing this, and, and for good reason. Because we did a lot of bad <laughs> stuff back then. I was like, I was like, yeah, that's about right. That's about. Are you? I mean, God, that's so sad. Yeah, I'd be worried too. Not going to. I mean, going to Italy and not have. I mean, Sean, you remember those trips, right? I mean, that was like. That was like. That's yeah. It was everything. That was the thing. <gasps> oh Lord, I remember going to uh, uh, the laundromat chip in Comiso. And somehow Sean uh, ended up in, in, in the dryer. Exactly. <laughs> it was a good trip. So I mean, that, Comey so, <laughs> and, and this was sad because Comey so remember, was a brand new base. You could yes. still smell, you could still smell the paint on the base. And I guess because of the INF treaty that was signed, they mm-hmm. closed it like two years, like only like three years later or something. So brand new school brand new base it was gorgeous i mean it was by far like it was remember and we were like one of the last people there because it like it closed like five months later that's, yeah that's sad it was like yeah. it was a brand new school brand new everything and they just yeah we were down. amazed by that school we would just stand by the sensor and watch the doors open up automatically and just look at it look at that you see that <laughs> wow how, do, how does how does how does such feats of technology occur <laughs> I mean, right they, and Sean, you, you won't remember this, Sylvia would, but I remember going to Call Me So, because that's my freshman year, Sylvia's sophomore year, I remember. Uh-huh. Um, and I remember the first time hearing about a fax machine. Oh, yeah, because somebody Sean, had to get some fax. Sean Kleb, I, this is the only time I've ever seen Mr. Kleb upset. <laughs> the, the entire time I knew Mr. Kleb, the only time I ever remember him being upset. I remember Sean somehow left her speech at home. Uh-huh. And, and tells her dad, like, I left my speech at home for drama festival, right? Mr. Club's face got so red. He's like, what? Because <laughs> the bus was about to leave. <laughs> and somehow, I don't even still this day, I, I would love to know. Somehow, Mr. Club, and somehow they find out that there's only two fax machines in the American p- p- bases in all of Italy, which I'm still shocked about. <laughs> There's one in Vicenza because it's the headquarters, uh-huh. and there's one in Comiso because it was then like part of NATO. And so they took the speech down to headquarters and got her speech faxed down, uh, and it was waiting for it when it got there. And I was like, what is this? I remember Sylvia was like, what is a fax machine? 
Is there something where you just take the paper and you put it in the tube? You, you, like, you crumple it up and put it in the tube and blow air. And I remember saying to myself, that's what it could be, but maybe she's right, you know? Like, they just take the paper, they just shove it in the coop, and someone blows on it really hard, and it magically goes 8,000 miles away. Um, I was like, afresh, I was like, yeah, I wonder what the hell this fax machine are talking about. So that, that so, so that, that's how I'll tell you how, like, we were so isolated then, as you know. We were like, yeah, we've come a long way. <laughs> we've come, we've come. Remember the movie theater? I mean, that thing, like, when the movie came out in the States, it was on it was on video by the time it got to us at the movie theater. <laughs> yeah, yep. I remember. What was his name? Uh, oh, man, guys, Mr. What was his name? Mr. Was it Foreman or Foreman? Foreman, yes, Foreman. Foreman. Mr. Foreman. Uh, that yeah, guy always get us in there free. <laughs> you remember that? <laughs> that guy, we'd, all, we'd always be like, is Mr. Foreman there? Is Mr. For Mr. Foreman is there. All right, we're getting in tonight. <laughs> <laughs> that guy ran a tight ship. That guy, that guy, that movie theater was his life. He ran a tight ship. I remember on any crowded movie, which was like pretty much everyone, because <laughs> like what else are you gonna do? He would take yeah, he would take a flashlight and, and like the movie would be playing, and he'd be like, I think there are two seats over there, two seats over there, <laughs> and he waved the flashlight, <laughs> and you, nobody would dare say shh. <laughs> they knew he would like just straight take him outside and probably beat them. Like that guy, would, like he ran that theater. Like I, I never, even to this day, I model his levels of efficiency. <laughs> All right, what was your what's your favorite movie from back then at the movie theater? God, what, I'm trying to think. What did I see over there? I can't remember what I saw over there. What movie did you go and see ten times over? It was Batman, first Batman. Oh, remember that. Do you, oh, we got to talk about that. Remember when- Wait, the, wait who when was the main character? Batmobile came. That was Michael Keaton. Um, I know, I'm just seeing if you remember. <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was, yeah, I remember Batman was crowded. And there was also another one. Was it like fried green tomatoes or something? I don't know. I was That's on some date there. I was like, what the hell am I doing in here? I was like, you know. It was like, Tawanda. You got, yeah, it, like, that's it, a it classic. Was cool, yeah. <laughs> that, was cool. that was yeah. I was too young for that. Jessica right. Tandy. Yeah, Jessica Tandy. That's right, Jessica Tandy. Uh huh. Did y'all ever go to the theater for the USO shows? Y'all remember when Sheila E came? Ooh, remember that? Ooh, that was after us. You must wait. No. Sheila E came to Vicenza. Sheila E came to Vicenza. I will never forget. That was a badass show she put on. Yeah. Wait, she Sheila got, E with the drums. Sheila the drums, E. The, <laughs> Sheila E. e. She Damn. got one, she one of the GIs up on the stage, and he about lost his mind. <laughs> you don't remember that, then you, you must don't remember it. You, when you're saying on, on the stage, you mean in the movie theater? Yeah, they used the movie theater for it. I don't really? remember that. How did you get tickets, and none of us remember this? Dude, she was a pop star. I know she was a. <laughs> yeah, Sylvia, we do need to talk about this because I think the people of Vicenza need to know your pop. That that you oh, are Jesus one, Christ. that you are a <laughs> number one selling artist in the Italy. on to the next chapter. No, no, we need to talk about this because you know <laughs> on to the next topic. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was Sean Dipsy who clued me into your <laughs> to your oh, career. Yes, I had a brief stint. I had a good time after uh, this is, uh, of course, after high school as well. Um, yeah, you know how you know how in the, in Italy it's really easy to get studio time and all that. Everybody's like, "Oh, you're American, you're American," and uh, as no, long as you no, take we have no <laughs> idea, we have no idea, we have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you can pronounce the word without an accent, you're in the studio. So I put together a little house music, and uh, <laughs> you know, saying whatever they wanted me to sing, and it was fun. Go to the clubs, play play your song. Uh, the best part was the little dancers that I had. You know the the guys. So was, so wow, wow, had some popularity, wow. right? You what was the were you like on the top ten hits or something or? Oh God, I, I, I think it, I remember them playing it a lot on. Uh, do you remember Radio Company? Company? No, you don't no. remember that. <laughs> I'm sorry. We, we we listened to we listened to AFN or whatever it was. AFN. Back then. That's all you listen to. <laughs> we listen. I'm sorry. We didn't we didn't, we didn't we didn't venture outside of the you know. It wasn't on my well, walkman. You missed it. You missed it. 
but if you blinked, you would have missed it. <laughs> so, no, but hey, it's still a great one. story. It's still <laughs> a great story. Yeah, I had a good time. I had a good time. But um, yeah, uh, um, speaking of movies, what I remember is Chip always playing that doggone Total Recall. <laughs> He must have loved the hell of that out of that movie. He played it every time he had a party. Do you remember that, Chip? Yes, and you know, you know, we won't go into details. This is a clean stream here, but that that was my date movie. I I, I, finally, got, I finally got to the end of it, like you know, when I was in the, when, when I was in law school. I was like, oh my god, this is what happened at the end. It actually is a pretty good movie. But I won't, you know, there are probably kids watching this stream, so, you know, well, there's sons back there, so I won't. I remember that, and I remember the, the, the bean burritos at your house. Oh, my God, if I ever see another bean burrito again. <laughs> hey, my mom didn't like to cook. She went to Italy. Like, <laughs> Obviously. She was like, I'm dumb. You know, all you guys, it's frozen food, or, you know, go to the restaurant down the street. I don't right. judge. <laughs> I don't judge. <laughs> I don't judge Carrie Jean, you know, back, back then. She's like, Robbie and dad are gone, so Chip, hey, it's a bean burrito every night for you. <laughs> nice, nice. Um, I was going to say, uh, so, so Sylvia, what do you miss most about high school? Oh, God, what do I miss most? Uh, I have to say, yeah, the camaraderie and, you know, um, I, I do miss that, the, those, uh, those, you know, monologues and plays that we used to do. I had a good time. I had a good time. You know, with Sean Club, you know, we did a lot of duets together. So, uh, what, yeah, what, I miss oh, that the most. You were telling me about the, your your Italian class. You, you have a lot of fluent pe Italian speaking folk yes. in Italian class. Yes. <laughs> Take an Italian. That was an easy A. <laughs> no, <stop. laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's funny, and it wasn't until like many years later that I realized, heck, there are a lot of in our school who are Italian, but not everybody let it on, I guess. I, I don't know. Um, you know, the, for you, for example, Sean, I didn't even know that you spoke Italian, and um, um, so many others, because I assumed it was just the four of us in Ms. Refosco's class, and that was it. <laughs> I had Everybody else didn't want that easy A. They didn't want that easy A. They're like, it's like we already know the language. Why, why would we take the class? So he's like, I just want the A. Yeah, just give me the A. I wanted a, I wanted a filler class. I need something to do. <laughs> you know, and things moved at such a fast pace. I mean, we were so busy. Like, I didn't want to get sick. Like, I didn't want to spend a day at home. I didn't want, I'm missing something, fear of missing out or whatever. I just, it was more fun at school or with whatever was going on. So. Yeah. yeah. It's, weird. it's weird because I know like my sister, Rob, Robbie did not, she always, you know, I, I think it's like when you arrived, I, I will say that because I look at you, I look at Sean, um, you know, both of you, I look at like, obviously, you know, even the clubs, I'm sure could say this and other, uh, those of us who got there, I think if you got there before eighth grade, you know, then you had nothing to compare it to. Cause I, I got there in eighth grade. My sister got there at 10th. And so literally Robbie, the whole time she was there was always comparing it to what it was like in the States. Uh, yeah, I can you know imagine. Saying? So she, she never, you know, I mean, she had fun, but not the kind of fun that we had, right? She was always like, oh, you know, if I was in the States, I wouldn't have to take this bus to prom. Or, you know, she always, you know, she, it was always, Back when I was in, you know, high school in Pennsylvania, this was going on. The school was bigger. I had people that did, you know, and I think because I was there so young, you know, I just remembered it was kind of all I knew. So my memories Good are point. way, yeah, I, I don't know how you guys find people. I just feel like if, if those people got there, like, right around the time we did, look back with fondness, and because I got to go all four years there, and I don't know, and come back, right? You know, obviously, because my mom taught there for until she moved back with, the, with my dad when they got the house built. But, you know, I don't know. I just find it, it was so, it's so different that how people that want, depending on when you arrived and when you left, I guess, because some people honestly had to leave like 10th grade or 11th, right? But it was rare that people got to do all four years. 
mm -hmm. through. And I, now I appreciate it so much more because there are not many people, uh, probably us, right? All three of us on this phone and probably I think a hand of people who spent ninth, 10th, 11th and 12th there. Like, mm -hmm. I don't think like the Palaritos yeah. made, like people who were like te the teacher's kids, right? Or people who worked yep. on posts. Cause I don't, most people either got their midstream or left or left before they got, the, got a chance to graduate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. There were a lot of people who felt that way, you know, that they, they would just miss the things that were in the States and they would always, you know, make comparisons, miss commercials, right. stuff like that, you know? But there's one thing that I can say that it stands true for pretty much everyone. I have yet to run into anyone who, has, who hasn't said, I miss it. I right. wish I could go back. Not one, or anyone who has said, you know, um, everyone has said, uh, you know, I just didn't know what I had at the time. Right. You know, and I appreciate, uh, appreciate it so much more now. But it seems like, Sean, you pretty much understood you had an appreciation for it right then and there. Sorry, my cat <laughs> wants to share his butthole. <laughs> okay. Cats in their buttholes, they just want to show it off. They're like, <laughs> these people on the TV. <laughs> so, yeah, I, you enjoyed the moment, I'm saying, Sean. Yeah, I, 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 I had many years of, of that. And so a lot of different um, grades and in stages of that which was fun it was um but how was it for you like growing up there because that's all you ever knew right I mean you were so young and then all of a sudden being uprooted from it and moving to the states that must have been quite shocking I would think even if you went back every summer which I imagine you did Right. Um, so I went to, uh, I went to Munich, the, uh, University of Maryland had a two year college campus there, which was, uh, which was kind of for all military holdovers in a sense, or those right. who saw the benefit or wanted to stay in Germany, which was great. Um, that, that was different. Mm -hmm. I mean, my, my, my high school years, I was just, what I what I liked in particular was I knew who my competitors were sports wise, so I knew what I had to do to who to compete and, and be able to you know place. So um, my um, my high school years was just rant, hard pace the whole way through. Just there was no like I hit senior year at the end like a wall. It really felt like okay now what am I doing? Like I didn't have this fourth shadow of thought, go out and look at different schools and, or go for scholarships or go ROTC. These were all statements, but they didn't make any sense to me. I, I got the uh, Princeton review book of 700 pages and you know, <laughs> rankings of schools. And I'm just like, so the, the US was this big, huge place. And I just didn't know where to go and what to do and all that other stuff. And then, right. you know, it, it really didn't matter in the, in the end. Um, it, it just mattered that I don't, I don't feel like I missed out on anything. I just didn't necessarily have a, a clear cut path or plan from the start. So, you know, I finished up high school, did it all. And then um, Germany for two years. Um, and then I ended up going uh, in those two years, we came back to the States when we visited a, a school in New Hampshire where I had in-state residency. So, father was a teacher not exactly the uh, income uh, generating stream of go wherever you want kind of thing and respectfully the fact that he was willing to pay for it is something I'll always appreciate uh, so you know it, it didn't matter I, I was girl crazy and just you know having fun so I went to I went to the boonies in New Hampshire in the heartland of, of the of the world of trees but the the funny transition wasn't uh, well, it was more like um, Metropolis Munich, the, like like a New York City, a city that never sleeps, always on the go, to like going and living in the sticks. So I'm wearing like metro sexual clothing, you know, fashion Italian and German, and 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 I'm I'm living in the middle of uh, steel toe hike of boots and dip and like kegs of shitty beer and. Uh, and uh, flannel shirts and stuff. And I'm like, 
<laughs> okay, whatever, let's get going. And, and, but the food, that's, that was actually the first thing that really started to go, where is taste? Where is flavor? Where is quality? And I couldn't find it. And it was, it didn't exist. It really, I, I, I had to kind of try to create it myself. And it just, it just, you couldn't compare or compete with um, Italian quality food. Wherever you go in Italy, it's just like, this tastes great. And it's portioned properly. Yeah. Over there. <laughs> and don't you feel like an egg? And every time you tell someone that, like, when they take you out to an Italian restaurant, I'm like, oh, this is so good. You know, and you're just like, mm. Not you know, yeah. uh, you know, back when I was in Italy, and then you see the eye roll, you know. Like, <laughs> oh, I get, I get many, like, many an eye roll. Yeah, the eye roll, like, oh, well, why don't you just go back? Why? I mean, why do you take an Italian to an Italian restaurant in in the states? What is the point of taking someone who just flew over from Italy to an Italian restaurant to say? This is what we call Italian. <laughs> yeah, this is how we do it. <laughs> people, people, people I, I'm so tired of the eye roll. I'm like, oh, that's not, that's not pizza. <laughs> you know? Like, right. You know. But then, <laughs> you know. Shop here for Domino's. You know, like, <laughs> right, right. It's just like the, the, and again, the quality just doesn't exist. I mean, okay, let's, I'm not, i generalizing, not every part of the world and restaurant sucks, but, but you just know when you're in Italy because it's just great. Yeah. You're talking about this with the Goldsteins. The you you buy a you buy a, a toast, a ham and cheese sandwich, at a right. gas station on the highway. An auto grill. You see, yeah. auto grill. <laughs> and, and people are like, "What? <laughs> you you order a sandwich at a gas station? That's disgusting!" And like, no, it's really good. Yeah, we're we're not talking about the gas station. They're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not the same thing. No, but we're not definitely. talking about those dusty old gas stations. Yeah. So, so to your point, I mean, the transition for me in the States wasn't, um, it was what it was. It's still, I miss what we had. I miss the, uh, you know, the melting pot community. Like my, my, my family, in, in a sense, here, they don't know what it means to be connected with people around the country. You know, people in uh, Arkansas. Or, or wherever people in Texas, uh, it's um, you know you just you just have different subcultures or whatever you want to call them, different cultures of Americana that you got in a melting pot in in the town. And we were fortunate, of course, that Vicenza had such a small school footprint that you had the opportunities that you did. I mean, I, I, I we're suffering at this point when I look at my son going into a high school where you know his chances of playing sports are not not high uh, school sports, uh, you know, club sports, fine, but his opportunity to actually, you know, place on the team are going to be very hard to come by just because of the comp competition. You got kids dunking in the eighth grade in basketball. It's like, hey, he's going into the ninth, but you know, when I heard a kid dunking in the eighth grade, I kind of said, well, I get it. It's probably not going to happen. We had a what, graduating class in Vicenza of 50. They have, he's got like 500. I'm like, Oh God! So, so maybe you can't, you know, learn that confidence and leadership and uh, experience. Uh, maybe you can, uh, you know, you might play some football or something. But um, I just, you know, it, it's going to be it's different. And uh, but at the same time, you have a lot more opportunities and friendships that can be made. So you, and more choices and girlfriends and everything else. So <laughs> well, that's it. I think you, I think well 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 put, my friend. I mean that's. You know, I'm, you know I, I say I miss Sylvia, I miss Sean Club, I miss Wendy, I miss Kathy. Your son's waving at us. I like, I like it. <laughs> We're going to all wave back. Um, but like, no, I, the good news I still keep in contact with, you know, obviously, you know, some people. But I, 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 I actually think we all are a little bit misfits, you know. I know when I came back, you know, I mean, again, like, you know, obviously, look, we're military brats and military dependents, or we live in that environment like you guys did. And we, look, we're survivors, right? You can throw us in anywhere. We're going to be like, we're going to know how to roll make with it. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to know how to roll with the punches and we're going to like adjust. But I think at our core, which I always think they should like research this. I actually think that we're all kind of like, I don't know, it's like a longing back, right? Because it's hard to find people who have the similar experiences as we did. And I think that, you know, and, and like I said, they were so formative to us that 
you know, like I agree with you, Sean, like I look at my daughters, right? They're so obviously much younger, two and four, but like I look at their school environment, it's nothing like Vicenza, right? It's not like, you know, these kids, you know, like laptops, whatever, like we got to go physically see those places, right? And like, I mean, you know, like I love museums because of that, right? I can, I literally like, you, wherever I go, a museum is part of my life, right? That's, that's mm -hmm. because of the, that one experience, not because of any other places, because of Italy, right? It's like art, culture, humanities, food, right? All those wonderful things that we get to experience, but it's, it's, it, I think it's really tough to fit in. I, I know I had trouble not fitting in the traditional sense, but fitting into like, because everybody, you know, in the States, you know, when you move back, everybody's like, oh, let's meet for, it's always around food here, right? It's like, let's meet for breakfast, let's meet for lunch, let's meet for dinner, right? Rarely do you find someone's like, well, let's just go meet the meat, right? You don't have to have food around, like the food is a reason, and that's not necessarily a bad thing, it's just, it's a, it's an American thing, like, let's, I can meet you in these designated slots in my day, right yes. this is my slot yes yes i'm not free for lunch today um what about lunch tomorrow yeah like, like yeah. Well, you know there's 24 hours in a day i'm not just because i'm not free at noon too doesn't mean i'm not free at like 3 30 right it's, it's kind of a weird societal cultural thing that you don't really get in italy right you're like you meet people whenever you like have a good time you have a drink you're not i don't know it's just a very special place so, yeah. you know i mean Love both countries, but it's it's like it's definitely it's definitely different. I'll add Getting though back to what you were saying, Sean. Yeah. What is it that I miss the most? Um, and I have to say that what I miss the most is is it's true. It's the people who understood me, and that's because they had a similar experience to the mine. So when I say that they understood me. Sometimes it's literal, <laughs> literally understanding, kind of like you, you know, um, that we can say once in one sentence, we might speak English, Italian, and dialetto Veneto, you know, the, the Veneto dialect, all in one sentence. And, it, and we may not even realize it, you know, <laughs> just how it comes out. Yeah. And so there, you know, people people who have a similar background people who know what it feels like you know to um have friends who come and go every three years mm -hmm. you know that that sort of thing no. um people who know what it's like to have only 50 kids in your graduating class yeah and that's the big class <laughs> yeah I, I will i want to share a different like a fast forward kind of story um mm -hmm. to, so i was saying in Boston, there's a handful of Vicenza people in the area, whatever. You say Boston, it could be Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire, Connecticut, uh, Rhode Island, it's, but it's close enough. Um, a long time ago, I, I, I think it was through Teddy Spittle's uh, starting point, the Vicenza Italy website, and I did the, the search query and it showed me people in Vicenza. And, um, I saw Chip's name and I was just like, okay, there's a phone number. I'm like, how old is this? Is this going to work or not? And I, and I called and he called me back and it was just like, you know, for us, it was like that, that desire to return to something that we had a long time ago. And ironically, I mean, it, and it's been great to have this connection. You know, we go about our lives for the most part. We connect when we need to, and I give them a lot of crap for the fun of it. Um, <laughs> I, I, you know, I, was, I was happy to be there when uh, his wife came into the picture and it was very nice to simply say, don't let this miss, don't mess this, don't mess this up, please. Just do, yeah, don't. do right here, okay? <laughs> this is the right, right one. Just, but I screw it up, yeah, I got it. Right, <laughs> but, but so we, we were able to reconnect and keep that and the beauty in it is that Chip and Joy still that, like in, indirectly on occasion we get the we, we we regress into Vicenza so I'm the upperclassman so he gives me a little extra whatever you say whether he's playing to my ego or not I don't know but, <laughs> he but gives clearly. me that respect <laughs> <laughs> but but no and, and it's great because he's he, Chip's an accomplished man he's done a lot in, in his life and and you know and our friendships continue to flourish and Nikki Buther is here too so um you know 
I had a funny story with Nikki, but I'll save that for another day. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it's good to have these connections. I mean, I see Nikki and her family. We've been hanging out together for years. I used to, I mean, April's her sister, older sister, my class uh, lives in Connecticut. We, we were always in touch. And then Nikki moved to Boston with her, her uh, husband and, uh, and their son. And, and next thing you know, we've been, you know, raising our kids together on the same timeline. So yeah that's great so yeah it is it's and it, and it does mean a lot to have that connection um with each other so and, yeah. and, and sean i should say sylvia visit we should tell people sylvia did visit us two. that's what it's been two years right it's only two right three. Two, three. Uh, two, yeah it was in 2017 so it's already been three years oh man it's crazy and yeah. we had a great and that was that was a fun night wasn't ben here too wait was it or was that a different night sean yeah. no it was ben strickman that was a different night Oh, that's that a different night. Night. So, yeah, because it was again. Yeah, ben was out with Nikki. Yeah, it was Ben. Str ben Strickland showed up a couple. I feel like when people come to Boston, they have to pay uh, homage to Sean, <laughs> and then then I'm the beneficiary of that uh, because <laughs> Sean will come by and like, hey, you know, um, so and so's in town. Why don't you drop by, Chip? And I'm like, all right, all right. you know. I, but uh, but it, it's really cool to have like at least one spot where um, I think Sean, you've done a great job making sure that people. Um, stay connected. And I'm serious. I want to give you credit for that. Because again, it's, 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 I think despite all the technology, you know, I think technology makes it hard to connect with people. I really do because it's, I mean, granted we're on a zoom call. So obviously <laughs> this, pre this is excluded obviously, but I think, I think but back it also day, isolates you it isolates you because you're like, you, you don't have a need to reach out to that person because they're on, Oh, I'll just look at their Facebook page and see what they're doing. Right. You don't like, you know, I, it's not the same, right. It's not the same as like actually trying to like, Hey, have a conversation with someone, see what they're like, see what, you know, just like what we did. So, you know, Sean, yeah. I'm going to give you a lot of credit for that because it's, it's, that's that's true. Not, that's, it's, 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 it's more challenging, ironically, due to the technology than it should be. Yeah. Well, yeah. You, uh, you asked for it. So, um, <laughs> let's see. Hello? This should, this should... Oh. <laughs> I <laughs> thought I had dropped the call there. What, what is this? Like, <laughs> Oh, so oh there it is. Look at that. <laughs> oh my. You'll be going to see you right now. Come through. I, I don't know <laughs> that it's going to find the picture, but the funniest reunion was Bart Draculich came to town. And That's right. I was meeting, I was hanging out with him, his daughter Sophia, and his wife, Paula. And we were in Back Bay, kind of the, uh, I guess, ritzy area of Boston, lots of high end shops and so forth. And and Bart and I were shooting the shit. Um, Sophia, much more raised in Italian. So in Italy, I mean, so spending a lot of time really wanting to absorb Americana, buy things and stuff to bring home and have that difference and edge and such. But um, she, um, well, anyway, randomly, Chip walks by. <laughs> that was crazy. Yeah, Chip walks by. And the next thing you know, I'm like, I, I know who they are. And they don't know who each other is. So ah. not that they've not changed physically, but, you know, uh, life's moved on over decades. So more than 20 some years later, they don't recognize each other. So it was funny because I'm like, Chip, Chip, come here. Hey, man, what's up? And then I'm like, hey, do you re remember him? You know, it was Bart Dracula. So I'm like, you know, and, and oh. Chip's like, hey, how you doing? Nice to meet you. Like, uh, like you like, kidding like, me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry if I was on. <laughs> yeah, you, as I say, Chip was putting on Mr. Politician, the refined, <laughs> let me meet you, whoever you are. Bro. And uh, I was like, no, no, no. Bart Italy, Bart Dracula. <laughs> that that <there>. Bart. <laughs> Hank Dracula. Oh, like, oh, person you know, Vicenza. <laughs> and it was just, you know, oh, yeah, 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 okay. You know, and it was, it was just cute, but it was just like, right. at okay. random, in, in the middle of Boston, we uh, crossed paths. <laughs> that, that, was, that was so random that day um how is he i'm sure they're doing well i mean obviously um you know, I know. well well unfortunately they lost their father not too long ago so yeah. they're in that early stage of transition and um you know keeping to themselves i'd say respectfully well let, let, you know we should shout out to all those people we've lost you know like i know bart and uh, i'm yeah. sorry the, the dracula your father obviously um obviously mr georgie who despite what people you know, said about him and his, you know, whatever. But I, I actually I thought, like, Georgie passed. 
he yeah he passed a few years ago, right, Sean? Probably about eight, nine. No, it's been a yeah. longer than that, right? I don't remember exactly what year, but yeah, he did. Hmm. It's been a while, and uh, I just remember he was another guy that, outside of all the issues, you know, I can I know more about American history than most people, and I still and I have more books in my personal library in American <laughs> history, all because of Georgie, and uh, you know, and it's and it's hard at the time you see people like being hard on teachers, you know, for whatever the reason. Mm -hmm. like Mr. Solomon, I remember, you know, he was another people like made fun, but I, I know more out of humanities than most people, right? Uh -huh. Mr. Solomon, right? You, you know, it's like, you kind of look back and like, man, these guys, these teachers who had such a profound impact in life, and obviously some of them are gone. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's you know, and, and you know, mm -hmm. your father was one of them, you know. You know I, uh, of them. I do Jeopardy in my class. Oh, oh, really? Did you tell Mr. Clapp? Did you send him an email saying, you know, that I think I did. I think I did. I, I, but he'll find out now for sure. But yeah, I still, I do Jeopardy his style, you know. Nice. And, uh, yeah. Keep it alive. Uh, the problem is, you know, they don't really have access to the um, stars and stripes like they used to. You know, they don't carry around the hard copies like we used to. But um, I try to you know, simulate as much as possible. <laughs> that's awesome. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, pretty yeah. funny. That, that's good for you, yeah. Sylvia. You know? Yeah, yeah. So I, I pick up a few things here and there. <laughs> so we're, we're, we're coming in on a good almost hour and a half here, guys. Yeah, and my, my son is over here <laughs> looking at me like, I'm hungry, Mom. <laughs> I'm not going to leave your side until you fix it. <laughs> it gives you a look like everybody else does when we start reminiscing on Vicenza. Everybody starts, oh, my God, here they go again, talking about how great they had it. Uh. <laughs> yeah, so, so your wife, Megan, is saying, so that's it right no more than two hours exactly yeah exactly exactly but we i promise though you know Sean, we'll keep doing these you know as long as you'll have us i mean yeah. i think we all you know look look at some point we all will be ready to go back i think if a, if a critical mass of us ever go back you know it could be a lot of fun like i really think you know, you're, you're, yeah but you're okay y'all can come to my house even if it's on Aviano, is that all right? Aviano, I, I, I'm going to pass Aviano. So we need so we need Jonathan Goldstein to take over a jumbo carrier jet, maybe one from FedEx where he works. Who we can all pile in, or he has to hop to a lot of different cities to pick us up, even little small towns. You pile into the back of this jumbo jet that he's going to fly into the Aviano airport, which I believe is a yeah. exactly where you land. If it can even handle a jumbo jet at this point, and then and then we'll hang out. Everybody that comes out of that jumbo jet is going to come and stay with you. Yes. Yeah. I agree to that. You, 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 you know what would be a good one, uh, Sean? I think you should do is like it'd be great to have like some of the teeth. I know Mr. Hill would probably be down with it. I know I would talk yeah. to him about a year or so. Yeah. Well, like, let's do that. You guys, I mean, you have a better connection with them, and I, I, I'd be more than happy to add this combination and bring him in. It's the same story with the other teachers too. It, I think it's going to work well if we have a few collective people that can kind of do the connection. I'll open it up to everybody to come in and say hello, but can you imagine like it's maxed out at 50 people on the call and everybody jarring in in, 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 in a choir, <laughs> orchestra, chaotic. Hey, look, Sean, I would just love to see Mr. Club and Mr. Hill together. I think again. that'd be Oh, and I'd love to get the lowdown of what they really thought of us. <laughs> exactly. Right. I, I got to tell you, that's the, there's an interesting point you make. Um, uh, so working on uh, Johnny Cohut and getting him on here, and we're talking about a volleyball reunion of sorts. <laughs> that's true. And uh, Johnny had a, a clear point to make. I need to know the scope of the podcast because. <laughs> right. His junior years, his high school years, his coaching years, his now teaching years, every year, and all those collective details. It's just, it's hard to... A lot of material. Yeah, yeah. So, and that, that my premise, of course, is selfish because we were champions those two years. And, I'll let uh, it go. I won't <laughs> let it go. <laughs> we let it go, man. We, we never won. We always got, you know, we went to Milan, always beat us. I remember... This guy, before we go, I remember he was uh, Guido, I forget his last name. He basically would literally go up for a spike and he'd point at you because he had so much air time. Jesus. He'd go up like this and he'd be like. <laughs> 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 and I 
reaction. And I was like a freshman and I, I would get nailed in the face. <laughs> Good job. Good job. Point your head a little bit this way next time. <laughs> and co would be like, look, if you're going to get hit in the face, make sure the ball goes up. <laughs> All right, guys, I got to go. This kid is going to be All right. Real. Thanks, guys. Thanks, All everybody. Right. All right. Thank you. Bye. I appreciate it.